Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today I'm going to show you how to connect up your BLSR camera to your capture card and get all of that onto OBS Studio. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so on today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to connect up our Lumix G7 camera using a Elgato HD60S and we're gonna get all of this plumbed into OBS software for streaming. And I'm gonna go through the steps of how to set it up to give you some ideas of how you set up your own streaming system. Now, obviously, if you're using exactly the same bits and pieces, this is gonna be right up your street. Uh, the audio quality may not be particularly good because unfortunately, my camera that I normally use for making these videos is the one that I'm using for streaming also. So if the audio quality isn't up to par, just pretend it's one of those foreign language videos that you just watch and see what's going on just to get a general gist of it. Got it with me so far? Okay, let's get into this. So the first thing to do is with our camera. So when you're streaming, ideally you wanna have a camera which has got a constant power source so it doesn't go to standby mode. So we're gonna take out the battery and we're gonna stick in our Delhi battery which is connected to a power supply. So this is gonna give us continual power. So all we do is stick that inside, pull the little flap out and tuck the cable in and that is it. So we can turn the camera on, ready to go. So you take off lemon's cap. That's pretty important. At this point as well, you can, obviously, if you want to, you can plug in a Lavalier mic, which is what I generally tend to do. This just plugs in on a 3.5mm jack on the side, so you can take the audio from the camera along with the picture and send it all through the uh, USB and HDMI feeds. Speaking of which, next one is going to be the HDMI cable. So on this particular camera, we're using a micro HDMI cable through to a regular sized HDMI cable, which is gonna go into our Elgato capture card. So first thing to do is to move the other side, is to take off the flap for our HDMI, and we just plug in our HDMI port into the camera, making sure it's around the right way, and that's it. So that is now connected. So now we've got power, and also we've got an HDMI source. So next is the Elgato. So this is the Elgato HD60S. I would strongly suggest if you are going to use one of these to go to the uh, Elgato site, which you can see on the desktop right now, download the latest version of the game capture for Windows. Regardless of the fact that this will actually automatically install drivers, I find it far, far superior to download this piece of software before you set up the rest of the kit. So download the software, get that installed on your system, and then we're ready to start plugging things in. So first thing to do now is to grab our HDMI, our full size HDMI, and on the Elgato, we can plug it into the in port. Now you can also, if you wanted to, you can plug in a microphone port into the line in section here. You don't have to plug it into the camera if you don't want to, or maybe you've got a camera which doesn't have a microphone input. You can use that input for it, whichever suits you. You can always, if you want to, plug in a USB microphone into your PC or computer or whatever it may be and use that through OBS, again, whichever is simpler for you. So this is a USB type C connection. So I'm getting stuck with it. So USB type C and we'll plug that into the Elgato. So that's plugged in. And the next part is actually plugging in the USB. Now most capture cards are purely USB type three only due to the amount of bandwidth that it needs to transfer through the system. So make sure when you plug this into your device, it is a USB 3 port. If you're not sure, consult your manufacturer's guide to see which one of the ports on your laptop or on your desktop PC are USB 3 enabled. If you plug it into a USB 2 port, this will not work. So we're gonna plug this into our USB 3 port on our Acer Aspire. Now on this particular one, the USB 3 ports are color coded with a blue tag on them to match up with the blue tag in cable. So when we plug it in, if you've got an HD60, you should get it to flash some white lights and to say that it's ready for streaming. So our camera's on, we've got a feed in, we've got our HD60 all set up. So the drivers have now just installed themselves in Windows. So now we're gonna go into OBS and take a look at what we need to do in there. Okay, so this is the OBS setup that I generally tend to use for my live streams. So I'm gonna show you how you'd add your source. So in OBS, in this bottom left-hand corner, you've got your scene section. 
And in the next panel over, or next box over, we've got our sources selection. So normally when I'm using the uh, G7 on a full screen, I've got the live banner, which is what you can see there, and also the HD60S. So if I right click on that, choose properties. At the moment you can see there's no picture at all. So sometimes what you need to do is uh, change the actual port that it's on. And there we go, it'll pop up. So if you go into your drop down menu and you've got various options, like user facing or Elgato game capture HD, just try different ones until you get your screen uh, to actually display on the screen. Generally, you can find that um, in these settings, the resolution, if you leave it to device default, that is normally the best option. Let the, uh, let the capture card do all the work rather than you having to. One thing you can do with this as well, like I said before, you have got an option to capture custom audio. So if you put a tick box in there saying use custom audio device, we can then choose our microphone array or choose Game Capture HD. So if we use Game Capture HD, now all of our audio will be coming through from the camera or from the actual input on the HD60 and straight in through that HDMI feed. So your audio and your video is gonna be perfectly in sync. So what we'll do is now, if I set up a uh, new scene and we'll take you through that from the very beginning. So we'll call this test. And so now we've got nothing at all on the desktop. So what we need to do now is add a source. So I'll click on add, and we wanna add a video capture device, because after all, that's what this is. So in the video capture device now, normally you have create new, if this is your first time, uh, but for me personally, it's gonna be add existing, but essentially it works in the same way. So I'm gonna choose HD60. You can name it to whatever you want to. So click okay, and there we go, boom, let's put our feed from the camera straight onto the screen and as you can see it's displaying and it looks really nice. We can now right click, go into properties and then we can go through and make any settings. So in configure video, you've got options. There is actually a section here for audio input. You can choose for HDMI audio or analog audio. So if you want the uh, HDMI one through the camera, you can choose that if you want analog. I think you can take it in through the HD60S, but again, you can play around with those to your heart's content. There's options for the video decoder for uh, PAL settings, for all those kinds of things if you want to play with that, and uh, other video settings, but generally you can leave all of that as it is. You've also got the option for uh, configuring crossbars, all that kind of stuff, but generally you don't need to use any of that at all. Generally, uh, device defaults is fine, but if you want to set it as a custom, you can do. So you can go into custom and set custom resolutions, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but again, because we've added a new one, it's just best to check that your audio device is correct. So that you've got use custom audio device and game capture HD. Obviously, like I said, if you're using a separate microphone, uh, an analog microphone, maybe an XLR or a USB type microphone, you can either mute this section. So you can have it enabled, so click OK. So just in case you don't have a, mic a working microphone, then you can use the, uh, the emergency kind of scratch audio. If you want to mute it, all you need to do is uh, click on the speaker icon, and there we go, that is your that is your feed actually muted. So hopefully the audio is working on the iPhone, otherwise what I've just said is going to be completely meaningless to you. But essentially there it is, that is how to set up your Lumix G7 with a capture device such as the Elgato HD60S, and to get all your footage into OBS. Now the next part of it is depending on what you're going to stream to. So in order to work that out, if you go into settings and then in uh, the stream setting, you can choose where you're going to stream to. So you can choose your YouTube or you can choose presets such as Mixer, Facebook Live, all those kinds of things. So this isn't just for YouTube. You can use a Twitch, Mixer, Facebook, Restream, etc., etc. But what you will need to do is to find out your uh, stream key. Now generally on YouTube, if you go into your stream settings or your live stream setup, it'll give you a new stream key for every stream you do. You can set it so that it gives you a default one every time, but generally it will rotate them so to prevent any kind of uh, copyright theft or loss of keys and that kind of stuff. So just make sure that you copy and paste your stream key from YouTube into this section, and obviously the same for Twitch and all those kinds of services. When it comes to uh, your output, you can pretty much change this suited to your particular uh, network. I've got my video bit rate set to 3000 kilobits per second using a hardware render, which is built 
which is built into the system. So I'm using the AMD uh, graphics card built into the laptop. You do have choices for software or hardware. Obviously software is gonna be a little bit more taxing on the system because it uses CPU cycles. Whereas if you're using hardware via AMD or Nvidia, it's gonna use your computer's GPU to take some of that uh, stress off the system. There's other various settings you can change, uh, but that's probably gonna be for uh, another video without getting too deeply into it. Again, you can change things in your uh, Canva settings. So if you're streaming at 1080p, this is where you make all your changes. You can, if you want to, you can have your base canvas as like 4K and use 1080p footage and have it upscale. Or conversely, you can take a 1080p footage and drop it down to 720p. If you are streaming to Facebook and those kinds of places where traditionally it's gonna be on a smaller device. Uh, you can also change your frames per second. So you can choose for anything from 10 up to 60, depending on, again, what you're gonna be streaming to. Uh, 50 would be ideal for the UK because of the light sources for flickering, 60 for the US. Generally, YouTube videos tend to all be roughly about 30 frames per second as a minimum, so you want to aim for 30 if you possibly can. But that is uh, pretty much it. So that is how to set up your Lumix G7 camera with your video capture device and get it all set up into OBS and hopefully get an output onto your stream. If you've got any comments or questions, please feel free to put them in the comments section below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This has been Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.